Okay, let's talk about soca toe again, because it's going to be incredibly important in all your uh, things. So, ka, toa, something you should remember. The sine of an angle we're interested in is equal to either the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, hypotenuse, that's the so part. By the way, sine is really spelled like that. Ka is the cosine of the same angle is equal to the adjacent which we call A, divided by the hypotenuse. That's the ka part. By the way, cosine is spelled like that. And the tangent of the same angle is going to be equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent side to that angle. And that's the toa part, and tangent is spelled like that. This is really important. And the triangle I showed you before is a very common one, where the sides were 3, 4, and the hypotenuse was 5. Note that the hypotenuse is never considered an adjacent or an opposite side. It's its own side. So rule that out when you're trying to figure out. But let's talk about that angle A. So usually in your book, you'll see a corner A, and they'll call the angle at that corner a little hat A. So they're talking about this red zone right here, this red angle right here. Well, it always depends what angle we're talking about. So the opposite side in this case is 3, and the adjacent side is 4 for that angle. So for the red circle, right, for the red circle, we're talking about opposite is going to be 3, and the adjacent is equal to 4. But note that if I was talking about instead, I'm just going to copy that, for that circle degree, whatever that angle is, note that if instead I was talking about the other angle, so that's for the circle right there, if we call that angle over there circle, notice that there's another angle up here, x. This one we ignore down here, by the way, because it's 90 degrees. It's the right angle. That x has different criteria. So for that x angle, note that, and I should really make it green or a different color, the opposite to that x angle is 4, and the adjacent is 3. So it all depends on which angle we're talking about, because the opposite to that x angle is 4, and its adjacent is 3. And we're going to find something interesting. Let's talk about both of them, but let's focus first on that little circle angle. I taught you that if we were looking for the sine, we go to Sokotoa. So, so the sine of that angle A is going to be the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. By the way, the hypotenuse in this case is always 5. So if we were to fig fill that in, we discover that it's 3 divided by 5. Notice that the hypotenuse is always the longest side and is always the denominator for sine and cosine, so it's always going to be reach a decimal smaller than 1. If you don't get a decimal smaller than 1, you have not found the sine. This is very different than what the actual angle is. And in this case, to find this, we pull up our angle, we, we pull up our calculator, which, first, there it is, so I'm going to pull up, and we have to go to our scientific calculator, right there, and I have to put in that 0.6. Now, for trigonometry, I have to go to the second item, and I have to look for that minus 1. This is called the, um, oh, what is it called? It's called the um, anti-sine, it's called the... Um, it has another term your teacher will use. But we have to go to, with the one with minus 1 when we have the decimal. And it will tell me that this degree, this angle, is this much. So we have discovered that angle, the actual in degrees, angle A, is equal to this much. And I'm going to round it up to two decimals. Actually, I'm going to round it up to there. Okay, I want you to degrees, and that's in degrees. Now, I want you to notice something. We're gonna, we know that a triangle can only have 180 degrees, right? So that angle right up there is that many degrees. And we know that there's a right angle here, right, of 90 degrees right there. So if we add that 36 to, ni to, to 90, we get 126.9 degrees. And there's only 180 in the triangle. So if we subtract that, we can predict what the other angle will be. The other angle will be 53.1. That's the angle up here. So that means this angle up here should be 53.1. Let's continue along Sokotoa. I just want you to keep that in mind. If we figured out this bottom left angle, this top left, bottom right angle, this top left one, 
should be 53 but let's just leave that out in the go so let's continue with our with our our angles now remember we found that for angle a if we continue with our soka toe and we don't have uh, all the sides and we have to use the cosine we have to find the cosine of that angle a it's just a different measurement way of measuring cosine says it's adjacent over the hypotenuse the adjacent side to this a corner is four and the hypotenuse is five and we get 0 0.8 and sure enough, if I do the cosine that has the minus 1, it's called an arc cosine. Arc cosine, which means opposite direction. If I find that, I discover, I will discover automatically 36.9 again. I'm not going to do the calculator. You go ahead and do the calculator. Put 0.8 and do the cosine to the negative 1, and you will discover the degrees rounded up is that. And same with I, if I do the tangent, I'm going to discover that. It's going to happen. Let's focus on this other corner now focus on this other corner this x and instead of since i know it's supposed to come out as 53.1 let's find do two things let's take the angle 0.1 and we're going to actually press three buttons separately we're going to press the sign we're going to then clear it we're going to press the cosine for that and then we're going to clear it we're going to press the tangent so let's do that 53.1 is the angle and now we're going to press trig sign so the sine of this angle should come out as this. If I find uh, my calculator, says the sine of this angle is equal to this. I'll just cut off some numbers so it'll fit, okay? My calculator also says that for that angle, 53.1, the cosine is this. So I'm going to just grab a few of them. Cosine of 53.1 is a different number and then finally my tangent if i look it up is going to be a different decimal number but they're all going to be different but they all have to do with 53.1 degrees as an angle again these decimals are what we use in the math that's why notice that tan's the only one that can be above one all right let's keep that in mind this is what our calculator says now we're going to use our trigonometry rules because the whole point of this is to learn where it came from and why we're not focusing on corner A anymore. We're not focusing on corner A. We're focusing on green corner up here. Angle, let's call it angle B. Angle, that's B corner, so that's angle B, which we're calling X. Okay, angle B. And we're not going to keep, we're just going to keep this 53.1 in the back of our head. We're going to look at our Sokotoa rules for angle B. So what are our Sokotoa rules for angle B? Well, so so says that we have can take the opposite over the hypotenuse. Opposite. The sine of angle B will be the opposite over the hypotenuse. But B has a different opposite this time. B has, opposite is over here, 4. So we should label that. The opposite for B is 4. And the adjacent is 3. And the hypotenuse is always 5. So notice the side that's beside X is right there. That's the nearest side to it that's not the hypotenuse. So we're going to do opposite over hypotenuse using its opposites. Its opposite is 4, 5, which comes out to 0.8. Now, let's go down and look very carefully down here. You might say, well, this says 0.8, but down there it says 0 0.799999. And that's because I rounded up the 53.1. Remember, it was 53 point something, something, something. As soon as I rounded up, the sign's slightly off. So that's pretty damn close to 0.8. So I can see that if I punch this in, now that I know my sign is 0.8, I'm going to, that's the, that's, by the way, this is called the exact value. And of course, these are not exact values because they go on and on. But I'm going to do 4.8 or 0.8 in my calculator. And then I'm going to inverse sign or arc sign to find the angle. And sure enough, there's the actual angle. That's why 53.1 uh, is not quite right, because the actual angle is this. Um, and um, I'm going to... So I'm going to mark down that angle and, and realize, okay, it's it wasn't quite 53.1. It's 53.1013. That's the, you know... And so that's how... It's, and, then, and remember, I did a round up here and subtract it. So that's why these numbers aren't quite matching these numbers. But you can see... It's pretty close. So that's the actual angle up there. If I continue and use the cosine method, the cosine of angle B up above should be the adjacent 
divided by the hypotenuse, A over H. The adjacent is 3 over 5, which is 0.6. So if I take 0.6, which is clearly a decimal and not, uh, and not an angle, I have to do arc cosine. Remember which one where you were where you're using cosine. Oh, I have to clear I have to remember to clear my calculator and do 0 0.6. And then do arc cosine. There we go. Notice I get the exact same angle. It's telling that's the cosine, but the angle is this. So we can see that there's a difference between this is the digital representation of the angle in cosine in cosine and this is the actual angle if i take the cosine of 53.1 i will get the digital representation and actually i get i get since I, when i round up i actually get this over here so you can see the digital representation is different than the angle so we have to know which one we're working with if we're working with the angle we press cosine if we're working with the digital and we want to find the angle we have to hit cosine to the negative one to get to the angle. So it's two different sides of the same coin, just like multiplication. These work in mathematical calculations. The angles do not. That's why the, we came up with these. They work in satellites. And the last one, if I do tangent, tangent is uh, TOA, opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent is 4 over 3. It's the only one that's going to uh, come up with a number that's above 1. And sure enough, if I take uh, 1.3333333 and do the arc tangent, 10 to the negative 1, I get the same angle. So no matter what method I use, I get the same angle. And the whole point is we're using these tools and the information in the triangle, not our calculators, to come up with values of uh, to solve it, just like we solve with Pythagoras theorem. So now we're going to do these ones one by one, okay? And you can try first and then go back. And, but as you get it, I want you to pause the videos and try them, right? So let's start with question one, which we, you and I already did together, but that's okay. They always start you off with basics to see if you get it. All right, we're going to just start with identifying things. They want us to identify what's the opposite of angle A. Let's find angle A. Angle A will be in the same corner as corner A, so we have to find the opposite. The opposite side is over there, and as you correctly told me this afternoon, that is the side CB. You can also say BC. It doesn't matter which letter comes first. But obviously, reading left to right, CB makes sense. What's the adjacent side to angle A? Well, the adjacent side is any side that's nearest that's not the hypotenuse. And that, as you said this afternoon, is side AC. And then finally, which side is the hypotenuse? It's obviously the longest side opposite the 90 degrees, and that is the side AB. The hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degrees. And this, by the way, Soka Toa only works for right angle triangles. You have to remember that. This is a tool for right angles, like Pythagoras. Pythagoras only works with right angles. So there we go. We've correctly identified those. And now let's go on. We're going to go to the next one. That's, you know, obviously they're just getting used to identifying things. Number two has some stuff. I wish, I think the teacher excluded number three. I wish she hadn't because number three helps you go. But it, it always helps to just practice, practice, practice. These are obviously angles, aren't they? Those are all angles. And so we're going to just work on it. So I'm, obviously, what's the tan? of 34, the first one. Well, clear my calculator. 34. Because I have the angle, I just go to trig and tan, and it's going to give me a decimal. Now remember, tan can be above one. And I want to just point out. Boom. That's, that's the answer for A. And they want it to four decimals. So we go one, two, three, four. Those are the four decimals we use. Only the last decimal is affected in rounding up. Since that's the last decimal is the fourth, we have to look to this number. Zero to four, we do not round up the five. Well, that's a zero. So we just get rid of everything else. So that's our answer for A. And I want you to keep that in mind. Okay. Now we're going to go to 78, the next one. Well, we just clear our calculator, press 78. That's an angle. So we just 
we don't do sine negative one. We just do normal sine. Sine, that's going to give me the decimal and it's going to be below one. Now, notice that they want the decimal to the fourth degree. Okay, fourth decimal, that's there. The next number determines only this one. That's below, that's four and below. So that means that's the answer. It does not round up. Then we're going to go to cosine 49. So we go to 49, trig, cosine, because it's an angle. And this is the number. But they want it to the fourth decimal. Here's the four decimals. We go to the last decimal, and we look at this one. Is it five and above? It is. That means this one rounds up to one, one higher than the number it's at. And that's the actual answer. Okay? So that's, what round, that's how you round. You go to the number after the last one you're rounding to and you see if it's five and above or not. And finally, that's an angle over here, 12. You can see that, sorry, the degree tells me it's an angle. So watch for the degree. And they want the sign. And there we go. This is the number they want right here. And then here they want the first four. And then we've got to look at the fifth. It's below four. So that's my answer. Now I want you to also practice if they give you instead the decimal, if they tell you, for instance, if they tell you that this is the uh, tan value, if they say this, this is the tan value of an angle, find the angle. Well, clearly this is a decimal, so we would point, take 0.675. Now remember, we're not going to quite get 34 because of rounding, because we rounded our decimal, didn't we? We rounded our decimal up. So now we got to go, if, if they tell me this is the tan value, i got to go to trig, second degree, to find the angle, I need that minus 1. And see, it didn't quite give me it, did it? It gave me 33.99 instead of 34. That's because we used a rounded up decimal. As soon as you round up decimals, it gets inaccurate. That's why you're not going to get back to exactly the 34 we started with. But it's still, we can see that we're still close enough. The, the value we're dealing with that they gave us for this was the angle 33.999. Obviously, if they told us to round up to the nearest degree, that would be up here, we would write 34, which matches our part A. It will work for all of that. If, for instance, instead of tan, they told us this is the sine value, the sine value of our angle, the sine value of our angle, find the angle, we would take 0 0.9781. We would go to trig. We get, we're trying to find the angle because they gave us the sine value. So we got it minus one or arc sine. And we discovered, yeah, look at that. It's not quite 78 though, is it? It's because we rounded up the decimal before. But if they told us to the nearest degree, that's a nine. So that would round up to 78. And we would get it rounding up. So you can see that we can find the angle in the reverse direction if they give us the decimal or we can find the decimal if they give us the angle. In this case it's clear each time they've given us the angle so they want the decimal. So you do not do the negative one for these. You just press the sign. Okay let's go on. Determine, determine. So here they give us the ratios, right? So that you need to pull up Sokotoa for this one because they want sine C. So let's focus carefully on each thing. First of all, where is C? C is right there. So we should find C's adjacent, C's adjacent, C's opposite, and C's uh, hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse is always going to be 15. So for angle, for angle C. You always have to focus on the specific angle. Angle C, the adjacent, is going to be the 17. It's right beside it. The opposite is going to be the side opposite. it. And, oh, look at that. I already made a mistake. Where's the right angle? Right angle's up at A. So the hypotenuse is actually the opposite of right angle, is that. So what's the nearest side that's not the hypotenuse to C? The nearest side the hypotenuse C is the adjacent. And what's the opposite of side of angle C? The opposite is eight centimeters. So just 
be careful. I'll maybe always start with finding your 90 degree and your hypotenuse so you don't make the same mistake I just made. That means the nearest side that's not the hypotenuse to C is that. That's the adjacent. And the opposite is the opposite side over there. So now that we have the opposite, we can take our SOHCAHTOA rules and we can answer uh, every, let's focus on side C. So this one's side C and this one's side C. The others are side B. So we're going to focus on that. Well, so they want the sine of C. And look at this. They want, they clearly, they want to write it as a decimal to four decimal places. So we've got to determine each ratio. Well, the first one, A, is sine. So that means sine is so. So what does so mean? We've got, that's why we memorize this. So means the sine of our angle C is equal to our opposite divided by our hypotenuse. Great. That's a lot to work with. So what is what can, what do we know? Well, we know we, they want the actual sine value in decimals. And we know the opposite. We wrote it down. The opposite's 8 centimeters. And the hypotenuse is 17 centimeters. Notice that the term centimeters cancel out. And we just get a ratio. 8 divided by 17. By the way, this is called the exact value of our sine. It's a fraction. If you use the exact values, you won't have any decimal rounding up issues. Sometimes teachers will say, find the exact value. And that's what they want there, the fraction. Because watch what happens when I take 8 and divide it by 17. I get a very long fraction that goes on. This is not accurate because it goes on forever, right? But we only need the first little bit. Now, she wants to the fourth decimal. One, two, three, four. That last number is the number we're concerned with, five. And we have to look at the number after it to see if that number after it is five or above. The number after it is indeed five or above, which means it rounds this number, the five, up to six. And that's our answer to four decimals. If your teacher wanted it even higher, if your teacher said to six decimals, you'd have to go to here. And then if you look at this last number, the 8 right here, the number after the 8 is the 2 to 6 decimals would be that because that 2 did not round up the 8. So it all depends on which decimal they're talking about, and it's only the last one that gets rounded up. So understand the difference between exact value and decimals. You can clearly see now, as an example, uh, if I were to find that angle... Uh, we don't know what the actual angle is. We just know the ratio. I am not going to get the same angle as if I use this number. This number here will give me the exact angle I want. This number here will give me slightly different. Let me show you. So 8 divided by 17 is this sine value. Let's look up, let's look up its trig value. So arc sine. It's talking about this angle. Let's write it down on the side. 17, 8 over 17 gives me this exact angle in degrees. Let's use this rounded decimal now. We're going to take 0 0.47, 0 0.4706. We're going to clear our calculator. 0.4706. And we're going to arc sign it. And let's look at the difference. It's very close. 0.7 is, oh, right there, it starts getting different because it says, this says 0.724, and this says 0.325. So after two decimals, the angles start getting different, and that's because this was rounded up. The 8 over 17 is the exact value. The 4.75 was a rounded up value. Let's continue. Let's keep our numbers there. We found our answer for A. The rest are very much the same process. They're the exact same process over and over and over again. It's very important you do them, so I want you to stop the video and try to do the next ones with the same technique. Okay, I, of course, will do the other ones just a little bit faster. So the next one they want is they want cos C. Well, we got to go to our uh, Sokotoa. Cos of C, I know it says A here, but we're looking for angle C, is simply going to be... Uh, see if I can bring it down. I don't know if I can. Yeah, there we go. It's simply adjacent over hypot uh, hypotenuse. We've determined the adjacent is 15. And we've determined the hypotenuse is 17. So it's 15 divided by 17. 
and they want it to four decimals. Now, 15 over 17 is the exact value. It's perfect. Uh, if your teacher said, give me the exact value of cos C, it would be 15 over 17. And, but she wants decimal to four places, or the book does, whatever. Here's the four decimals. There's the number after the fourth decimal, so obviously it's higher than four. So it, that is our answer. Rounding up is all based on the last number and the number after it. And then tan C, well, what's tan C? We go to our Sokotoa. It's going to be adjacent over, or sorry, opposite over adjacent. We know our opposite is 8. We know our adjacent is 15. So our opposite divided by our adjacent is what we're looking for. If your teacher wanted an exact answer, the, an the exact value is 8 over 15. Because it gives us precise numbers that stop. Whereas if I take my calculator, I'm forced to round up. Which makes it imprecise. So 0.5333 forever. Clearly, there's no rounding up. That's my answer. The others are the exact same method. Except now we're talking for angle B. Angle B has different, has different opposites and adjacents. So we have to change these. Right here, these all change. Okay. So we have to find angle B. Well, angle B is corner B over here. So let's ignore that line that goes to 8. I should have erased it. And maybe I still can. Let's see. No, I don't think I can. That was pointless. Oh, I did. Good. So we're going to just focus on angle B this time. We've got to find tan, cos, and sine. All three of them. Angle B, the hypotenuse is still 17. The opposite's 15 and the adjacent's 8. I want you to notice that this opposite of C is the adjacent of B. And the adjacent of C is the opposite of B. This will become sort of important later. So we'll get into it. So let's, uh, let's, let's do this again. They want a tan of B. Well, according to Sokotoa, tan is opposite over adjacent. So we should find the opposite value. So we know hypotenuse is 17. We know the adjacent is 8 centimeters. should be centimeters, but they, the centimeters cancel out. And our opposite is 15. And we just punch in our value. So they want opposite over, so they want opposite over adjacent. Well, our opposite is uh, 15 and our adjacent is uh, 8. 10 is the only one that can become a number above 1. So 15 divided by 8 is our exact answer. And the four decimals, this is our, oh, look at that. That is very precise. And guess what? If they say to four decimals, you actually include a little zero here because you want to show four decimals here. Even though there's nothing, sorry, even though there's nothing on your calculator, it just says that. Four decimals, that zero indicates that we're precise to four decimals. So that's what you would do for a missing zero. You'd make sure you have four numbers there, essentially. So cos B is according to so -co Sokotoa, cos B, cos is ka, ka. So that's adjacent over hypotenuse. Our adjacent value is 8. Our hypotenuse is 17. Notice that for cos and sine, we're always going to get below 1 because hypotenuse is in the denominator. And the hypotenuse is always the biggest number. So anytime a small number is divided by a bigger number, you're going to get a decimal. And this is the number we get. Now, I wish they'd asked us to compare the cosine of this number to the sine of the other one because there's some interesting things going on but i don't want to confuse this and finally sine of b is the same as so katoa so that's opposite over adjacent opposite over uh, hypotenuse rather and our opposite we've listed as 15. it's important to list them for each angle because they change our hypotenuse is the only one that stays the same and of course we're going to get less than one because 15 divided by a bigger number, 17, will always give less than 1. And to four decimals, notice it goes on and on and on. And the 5 is after the 3, so that means this 3 becomes a 4. And that's it. That's the, four, the, the, the values. As I go, I always want you to stop the video and then try it yourself as you go. And stop the video before I do so. You can watch one example and then try it yourself. 
And sometimes that works out well, and sometimes it doesn't. Now we're going to go into some conceptual things. So we're going to go on to number seven. And we, I think I need this triangle on the, on the left. Okay. It says calculate the measures of X. So where's X? There's X. It's in a missing angle. There's Y. Missing Y. To the left to the nearest degree, which means we're going to round up with no decimals using one of the primary trigonomic ratios. Do you need to use a primary trigonometer to determine the measure of y? The answer will be no. We can take 180, subtract 90. Now I want you to notice, when I subtract that 90, what am I left with always? 90. That means these two angles here have to add up to 90. So really, I can just take 90 and subtract whatever angle x is. But I'm going to also use the trigonomic ratio. So we can calculate, notice that they give us the hypotenuse. We're focusing on x. They give us the adjacent, and they give us the opposite. You can use any SOHCAHTOA you want because they give us all three. So SO says we could take the sine of angle x, and we can take the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Ka, ka says I can take the cosine of, op, uh, of I can find the, cos, find the cosine of of angle x by taking the adjacent and dividing by the hypotenuse and toa says i can find the tan of angle x and in this case you're going to learn the opposite the, we have to use the inverse or the arc symbols it says toa says it's the opposite divided by the adjacent well let's label our opposites for uh, x the hypotenuse is 65 opposite the uh, 90 degrees the adjacent is 25. It's the only, it's the side that's nearest to x that's not the hypotenuse. And the opposite is 60. So it's always good to label. Now we just can fill it in. And I want to show you that no matter which one I use here, I will get the same angle. Let's start with this and just fill it in. What did I say my opposite is? 60. What is my hypotenuse? Come on, there we go. 65. So all I have to do is find that on our calculator. I'm going to leave it my calculator, okay? 60 divided by 65, because they don't want the decimals. They want the angle. Well, I get this long angle, don't I? If I were to write it down, I'm going to leave it in my calculator. It keeps going on and on and on and on and on. But that's obviously a decimal. That's not the angle, and they want the angle. Calculate the measure of x. That's an angle. So I, I figured out sine here, didn't I? Sine. This is the sine, so I have to go to trigonometry, and I have to go to second to get the sine negative 1. I have to use arc sine. Whenever I have the decimal, I have to go the reverse direction to find the angle. And I determine that this is the angle we're talking about. But they want it to 1 degree, so they want me only to go focus on the 7. What's after the 7? A 3. So there's no rounding up. But I want to show you that no matter which one I use here, I'm going to get 67. What's the cosine value according to Ka? Well, it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I've determined my adjacent is 25, and I've determined my hypotenuse is 65. I'm going to put that in my calculator. I'm going to skip the decimals. I'm just going to go straight to the, leave it in the calculator. By the way, you should pause and try it yourself now at this point. And that's my cosine, but that's not an angle. That's a decimal, so I've got to go to trig, second, cosine, and look at that. What angle did I get? I get that. I round to the first degree, though, the one degree they want. They ask, that's three. So that's the answer. Notice I get the same answer no matter what trigonomic ratio I use. Tan says opposite over adjacent. I know my opposite is 60. I know my adjacent is 25. Tan's the only one where you can get above one. So I'm going to go as soon as I find my thing, 60 divided by 25. I'm just going to leave in my calculator. 2.4. Now I'm going to go to trig. That's not an angle. It looks like it's an angle. It's not. This is all decimals. When I find the actual tan value, it's a decimal. I go to second value, tan, and look at that angle. What did I get? I get the same angle yet again. So no matter which one I came up with, I determined that this angle up here is 67. Well, instead of doing 180 minus 90 minus 67, because 180 minus 90 is always 90, I'm just going to do 90 minus 67, 
and I discover the other angle is 23 degrees. That means that y is 23 degrees. But let's just do a quick one for y. Let's use any of them. Let's use the sine value, and we're going to find it for y this time. We're going to find the so, the so for y. So we're going to find the sine angle of y tells us it's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. But y has the different opposite. y's opposite is 25 divided by 65. Not the same as x opposite. So that means I have to take 25. Now remember, I'm looking for 23 is the degree. And I have to divide it by 65. I'm going to leave it my calculator. 25 divided by, i got to clear, 25 divided by 65. And I discover this decimal. Well, the decimal's not what I want. I want the angle, and I'm looking for 23 degrees. So I go to trig, second value, and I'm working with sine. So look at that. It's 22.6. And you might say, how come that didn't come out with the same value? And that's because we rounded the other angle up to 67. So if I round this to 1 degree, notice it's 22.6. What's this number? It's above 5, so it rounds it to 23. So you can see that the exact angles are slightly different from the rounded angles. That's the exact angle. It keeps going, so it's not quite exact. But it's more precise, I should say, than 23. But we found it two ways, subtracting from 90 or SOHCAHTOA. But that's what they're asking you to use your, your knowledge of triangles to, can, to figure out 23. I want to point something out right now. Notice that the cosine of y, cosine of y, is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And notice that the hypotenuse for both of them, for both of them, we'll put it in the middle, is always 65. It's always the same number. But the adjacent for, for cos, to, for y, is 60. So that means if I was to find the cosine of y, it would be 60 over 65. Now, stop. I'm going to go over to x corner, the x value, and I'm going to find the sine of x. Well, I know according to SOHCAHTOA, the sine of x is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse is always 65. So all I have to do is find the opposite side of x. Let's go of x this time. The opposite side of x is 60. So it's going to be opposite side of x opposite side of x, sine x is equal to 60 over 65. Oh, look at that. Stop. The cosine of y is 60 over 65. The sine of x is 60 over 65. That is because y's opposite is x is adjacent. Since we use the in cosine here, since we use, sorry, y's adjacent is x's opposite. Since we use the adjacent for the cosine for y, and the opposite for the uh, uh, sine, sorry, the adjacent for the cosine of y, and the opposite for the sine of x, we end up using the same numbers. This means that the cosine of one corner of any angle is equal to the sine of the other corner. It also means the sine of y is equal to the cosine of x. This will become important later. The tan has really no relationship. You're going to discover that the tan of y is, the number is going to be equal to the 1 over the tan of x, but let's forget about it. This is more important. Not part of the book, but it's an interesting observation. Let's move on. Number 8. Solve for x. This is interesting. This seems confusing at first, and then we can say, oh, wait, it's sort of algebra. Huh? Yeah, that. Solve for x. Well, let's focus on what's missing. Well, remember, I can't use co the 45 degrees in a, in a formula. And I can see that x is being divided by 6, and I want x all alone. So I'm going to multiply by 6. Notice, we don't, notice why we don't use the multiplication symbol anymore, because this x and this x. So we use the dot symbol. These sixes will cancel, but I have to multiply on both sides. I should put this in brackets. Always treat a cos of some angle as if it's in brackets. So these will cancel, which means that x is actually equal to 6 times the cos of 45. Notice that I'm dealing with an, an angle, 
not a decimal, so I should just use the cos of it in the calculator. So I should just punch in 45 for the angle, go to trig, and we're dealing with cos. And if I were to write it down, I'm just going to leave it in my calculator. That's the decimal that would go in there. That's the actual thing that we can use in a calculation. But I'm going to multiply it by 6. I'm going to multiply it by 6 because we're multiplying it by 6 here. And I get this, 4.24. And you might say, well, what the hell is that? It really doesn't uh, have a role yet. It's just they want you to learn how to solve missing numbers. So all they're really teaching you is that the cos of 45 in, if 6 is the denominator, would be 4.2426. Oh, and notice they want to one decimal place. So 2 has a 4 after it, so it's that. So it's not that cos 45 is equal to that. It's that cos 45 is equal to 2.2 .2 divided by 6, roughly. So they're just teaching what the fraction is. Now, you don't, mem don't memorize those fractions or anything. They just want, essentially, they just want you to learn how to solve for a missing number. Okay, that's all they want you to do. They want you to learn how to solve for any missing number in the equation. So I want you to uh, stop and try some more, and then I will continue. Okay, so we're going to continue. Obviously, they just want to solve for x. So in this one, if we look carefully, we can even, we can even figure out tan 75 first if we want. You can do it this way as well. So this, because it's already in degrees, we just go to this to get our decimal. And that means tan 75 is equal to this long number, okay? And it's also equal to x divided by 20, and we're trying to solve for x. So what is happening to x that's harassing x? It's being divided by 20 on each side, or sorry, and we have to multiply. This will cancel out the 20 on this side. So that means I have to take this decimal and multiply it by 20, and that is the missing x value. That's all they want, is what is the x value. And the x value is 74.64. Okay. X is, and they want it to one decimal. So we go to 4. This has a 6 after. It's above 5, so that means that's 5. 4, four goes up by 1. That means x is 75. And all they're saying is what fraction will equal the sine value on the left. And you just keep doing it like that. I know I went to C there instead of B, but there we go. This one, let me show you the two methods here. Okay? Because x is on the bottom. When x is on the denominator, it's very hard to solve. I'm going to show you the standard algebra method, and I'm going to just leave the words cos 60 there like that, okay? I'm going to leave the words cos 60 like that. Let's start first by multiplying both sides by x. This is the way you get x out of the denominator, because on the right side, x times 15 divided by x cancels. So suddenly, x is on the denominator, or sorry, it's on the numerator, but on the left side of the equation. Now x is being multiplied by cos 60, and we want uh, x all alone. So we divide both sides by cos 60. It disappears on the left. And that's what x is equal to. So we take 15, and we divide it by cos 60. So we take 15, and we divide it by, and I'm going to open the brackets and just put in 60. That's an angle, so we don't use second. And just hit cos and close brackets and equals. And we get 30. So x is 30. In other words, the number that here has to be here has to be 30 for this to be true. Let's see if that works out. So if we find cos 60 in our calculator, you will discover that it's 0 0.5. So on the left side, it's 0 0.5. And 15 divided by x. Let's see if our right side is indeed comes out as 0.5. Well, according to my calculations, x should be 30. So let's see if this is true. If I take 15 in my calculator and divide it by 30, I do indeed get 0.5, which means left side matches right side when x is 30 over here, which means I got the right answer. Let us look at the second method of solving this when uh, x is on the bottom. Because I said to you, you can just um, flip it. You can just flip it. But notice that this is not really a fraction on the left side. 
Well, technically, every number is indeed a fraction. It's over 1. So if I want to solve this, I can just flip both fractions. So I get 1 divided by cos 60. is equal to x, let's see if I get 30 this way, x divided by 15. What is x being harassed by this time? x is being harassed by 15. Now we can solve 1 over 60 if we want, but let's see what happens when we first get rid of 15. We, we multiply 15 on both sides, so 15 on this side. 15 is essentially over 1. So 15 multiplies 1, you get 15. 1 multiplies the co-60, you get uh, co-60. And these 15s cancel out. So you get x is equal to 15 divided by... Uh, I can't quite... I'll put this one over there instead. 15 divided by co-6. Co-60, rather. We will discover that that's the same method. That That's the same thing that we got when we multiplied both sides by x and then divided both sides by post 60. We got that, the same thing. So both methods will work. Uh, one is slightly easier to understand. What do we do here? Well, x is being harassed by 14. So we multiply both sides by 14. And you simply take 14 and multiply it by sine 62. So it's really just getting you to practice. Sine 62 is this. And when I multiply it by 14, I get that. And so that's my x, but they want me to round up to the first digit. There's a 3 after the 2, so the answer is 12. Same for this one. We got that. And, okay, so we're going to proceed with the process. We've got to solve this. It's very similar to the other one. We have two choices. We can either consider this as over 1 and flip both fractions, in which case we get 1 over 1080. And we can solve for x by getting rid of z equal to x over 12. We multiply by 12 on both sides. This cancels, and this becomes 12 over here. You can work that out. So we discover that x is equal to 12 divided by 1080. So that's, that's the cheap way. The reality is whenever you have x at the bottom, you have to get it off the bottom. You'll discover you get the same thing. You have to multiply both sides by x. It cancels out on the right side. But now we have x at the numerator on the left side. We have to divide both sides by 1080 to get rid of the 1080 that's affecting x. And you get this. Same thing. So that means we just have to take 12 and divide it by, and you just go 80, 10. And don't forget to hit equals, because that's the 10 of 80. That's not the answer. 2.115. And they want it to one decimal, so it's 2. So even though it's 2.111, they want it to one de oh, one decimal place. Okay. So it's 2.111. I might have made a mistake on the other ones. So it's got to go to one decimal. So it's 2.1. So that's x. And then finally, let's see, that was d. So we got this one. Same thing. Let's do the, the proper way. We can't have x in a denominator. We have to multiply x on both sides. It cancels on the right side. Now x is being harassed by sine 45. Just treat sine 45 always in brackets as something that's being multiplied by it. Move it together. Don't treat the 45 separate from sine. So you have to divide both sides by sine 45. It disappears on the left. We get x is equal to 10 divided by sine 45. That's sine 45. I have to do equals. And it's a 14.14. So x is equal to 14.14, but you have to round up. So if x is equal to 14.14, and we have to round up to one digit, this stays 1 because that's 4. And there you go, that's 8. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, next one. We have to solve for the angle. So they use this symbol over here. This symbol here is a Greek symbol. It's called theta. 
So if your teacher ever says theta, that's what they mean. It just means a missing angle. So we have to solve for that. They have to determine the length of x. And then they want, they also want, oh, they also want the primary, uh, ra oh, they just want the primary ratios for that. So they don't want us to solve that. They just want us to solve, come up with the primary trig ratios. What are the primary ra ratios? They are sine. So according to Sokotoa, sine is e of the theta is equal to um, opposite over hypotenuse. Cos of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So let's solve for x first. Obviously, we can come up with x with um, Pythagoras theorem, right? But this is not a Pythagoras theorem section, is it? We can clearly see that the hypotenuse is undiscovered. It's equal to x. And they want us to use our current... Oh, actually, you know what? We can't. Let's see. Until we come up with that. So, yeah, they do want us to use Pythagoras theorem for x. My bad. So, let's start with x. So, x here is the uh, hypot hypotenuse. So, we know a squared plus b squared is equal to x squared. Normally, they would give you the angle so that you can use this method to solve x. And we'll get into that. So, we, we know a is equal to 8 and b is equal to 15. So, that means 8 squared plus 15 squared is equal to x squared. Pause the video and continue to solve for x. 64 plus 15, I think, is 225. 225. And that adds up to 289. So, that means that 289 is equal to x squared which means x is equal to the square root of 289. And they want the length of x, so hopefully 289 is a pure square root. And let's see if I got it here, square root right there. 17, so x is 17. So now we have the hypotenuse. Careful on b, the hypotenuse is not what you think it is. Okay, so now we have enough to, to deal with this. What's if we're talking about theta? What's the opposite? The opposite side's over here. What's the adjacent? Not counting hypotenuse. The adjacent's here. So we should always label. In this case, our opposite is 15, our adjacent is 8, and our hypotenuse is 17. So what are the primary ratios? They don't want us to solve it, so we just put it as a fraction. What's opposite over hypotenuse? 15 over 17. Stop. That's exact. Adjacent over hypotenuse, 8 over 17. Stop. That's exact. What's uh, 10? It's opposite over adjacent. So opposite is 15 over 8. Stop. She didn't ask for decimals or to round up to decimals. That Those are the exact primary trig ratios. Good enough. If she then instructs you to do decimals, you can proceed. Now what I meant here is on this one, so we're done that one. Just, uh, the next one's the same method. Notice that on the next one, it looks like the, the hypotenuse is up here, but it's not. The hypotenuse is opposite the 90 degrees, so that it's there. So that means hypotenuse, and actually I should come back because I'm going to keep all of these here. We're just going to have different values. So that means the hypotenuse here is actually 13. A is equal to 12, and B is equal to X. We don't know X, but we do know that X squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared, which means that x squared is equal to 13 squared minus 12 squared, which means that 169 minus 144 means x squared is equal to 25. If we take the square root of 25, we discover x is 5. We now have our situation, but now let's look at the theta they want and figure out what our opposite is. Our opposite, not counting the hypotenuse, is going to be 5. And our adjacent is not the 13, it's the 12. The hypotenuse does not count in those. So that means our adjacent in this case to theta is 12. Notice that the opposites change depending which corner. The opposite's 5 and the hypotenuse is 13. According to this, sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. 5 over 13. Stop. That's exact. You can stop right there. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. It's 12 over 13. Stop. Tan is opposite over adjacent. Opposite's 5 and adjacent's 12. There you go. We're done. 10.
exacts are always better than decimals. Okay, on to number one of the next section. Uh, I've written it in your assignment what pages this are. Isabella is flying a kite. What? Why does Isabella get to fly a kite? When the kite is 15 minute, meters above the ground, it makes an angle of 50 degrees. So this is the angle they're talking about, not here. So she's, they're just telling you the angle to the person flying the kite. If Isabella is holding the string one meter above the ground, okay, so that's interesting. One meter above the ground. Okay, so that's a weird factor. So if, if she's holding the kite one meter above the ground, it means it's not 15 meters over here, and that's kind of a weird... Uh, uh, how much string is released? Round your answer to the nearest meter. I find this question really annoying and crazy because they've really added a complication to it. Here's the complication. If the kite is 15 meters above the ground, but Isabella's string is one meter above the ground, that means this line here creates a triangle here that is not 15. It's 15 minus that one space right here. So that's kind of pointless what they're doing. So that means this distance is actually 14. We also don't know anything else. That one meter does not play a role. So I'm going to get rid of it, except to tell you that side is actually 14. But we do have the angle and what appears to be the opposite side of that angle. Let's look at Sokotoa and see what Sokotoa has in it. So, ka, toa. Well, it says that the sine of any angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Well, we don't have the, uh, the hypotenuse, but we do have the sine, uh, we have the angle, and we have the opposite. So that means I can figure out, divided by h, that means I could figure out the h, but the h is at the bottom, and it's a bit of a hassle. So let's look at some others. Over here, the ka says the cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Well, we don't, need, no, we don't know the hypotenuse or the adjacent, so that's not really going to help us. We just know the 50 over here. So we should skip that one. Well, you need only one missing information. And the tan of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And we have the, the 50 and we have the opposite, and, we, and we're missing the adjacent. But again, the adjacent's on the bottom. So it doesn't matter which one we use. We, we are going to have something at the bottom. So let's fo focus on this one. How do we get h off the bottom? Well, we could either flip the fractions, which is e easy, or we can do the algebraic method. We have to multiply h on both sides to get h at the top. Treat that as if it's in the brackets. These h's cancel, so I'm left with 14 is equal to h times sine 50. I can divide both sides by sine 50 to get rid of the sine 50, and we're left with h is equal to 14 divided by sine 50. So that means that's what my h is going to be. How do I figure it out? Well, 50 is an angle, so I should take 14 in my calculator and divide it by Sine, well, let's do it separately. Let's, let's solve the sine 50. Here's sine 50. And I'll keep all the decimals. Trig, sine. It's an angle, so I don't do the inverse. And there's sine 50. So that means h is equal to 14 divided by this number. h is equal to 14 divided by that number. So I could, you know, solve in the number, save it in memory and all that stuff, and then, and then do it. Or I can just say, okay, it's 14 divided by... 50 sine, and you're calculating, you might, you might have to do sine 50. Go to the trigs and hit sine. Now that's not the answer, that's just sine 50, and we have to hit equals, and we get 1.305. Now, we can do it like that, and that's what the, oh, and I got the, I know I got the wrong answer because that's not the, uh, the correct hypotenuse. So let's see if I can try that again. Sine 50 is equal to opposite over the hypotenuse. Uh, opposite's 14. Flip both sides. Ah, I, yeah, I did it. It's 14. I did that wrong. Oh, hang on. H, 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 14 divided by, yeah, it's 14 divided by that. So it should become a bigger number. So I got that wrong. 
So I'm going to do, because there's too much in my calculator, 14 divided by sine of 50. In this calculator, do sine first, or 50 first. And then that's the sine 50 at to equals. And I get 18.275. So that's going to be the answer. Or I can, in my calculator, store that sine of 50. And then I can do 14 divided by the memory. Oh, it's no longer in there. So I could have stored it in memory. It's a long way to do it, though. Now I have it in memory. And then I can just take 14 and divide it by the memory. And get the same answer, 18.275. Which means, depending on, since we're all in one decimal here, I can either write it as 18 point, I don't know, 28. Or I could just write it as 18. It depends. Since the other one's in just two no decimals, it's probably 18.8. 18. But really, see how much I'm rounding up there? It really gets inaccurate with that. To figure out the adjacent, I would not use Pythagoras because we round it up. I would use this technique over here. Tan of 50 is equal to 14 times adjacent. I don't know the adjacent. I'm going to multiply both sides by the word adjacent. It's going to cancel here. Tan 50 is, divide, is multiplying adjacent here, so I'm going to get rid of tan 50 by dividing both sides by tan 50. And I'm left with adjacent is equal to 14 divided by tan 50. So let's do that in our calculator. 14, clear our calculator every time. 14 divided by, in this case, i got to go 50, 10. And i got to hit equals because that's tan 50, not the answer. So that means my adjacent is equal to this, most accurately. So that means this adjacent here is either 11.75 or round it up 12. It depends what, it doesn't tell us to round up. Oh, round your number up to the nearest meter. Okay, so that means 18 is the right answer and 12 is the right answer. But don't use Pythagoras theorem, use these things because Pythagoras theorem will create more errors because we're using a rounded number in the Pythagoras theorem. So that's, uh, that's the answer. Notice how the stupid part of this question is that Isabella's one meter off the ground so that this height here is actually 14 because this extra 15 here is one more meter to the ground. I don't like questions like this. I think that extra meter is pointless to what we're trying to solve here. They're trying to get you used to word puzzles and I just don't like that particular word puzzle. Number three. If a guy is to attach a cell phone A guy, a guy uh, wires attached to a cell phone tower shown at the right. Guy's wire is 30 meters long, so essentially we know the hypotenuse. The tower is 24 meters high, so that's over here. So determine the angle that is formed. So this is the angle. So we can see what information do we have to that angle. That's the opposite, and that's the hypotenuse. So we have to use any of the equations that have opposite and hypotenuse in it. What are they teaching you here? They're teaching you which three of these equations to use based on the information. Well, over here, the sign is based on the opposite. The sign of the angle based on the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine of that angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And tan is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. If I look closely, I don't have the adjacent. I don't have the adjacent. And I don't have the angle. I don't have the angle. So I should not be using those two. I should be using the information I have. I have the opposite and I have the hypotenuse. Which means sine of this mysterious angle is equal to 24, which is the opposite, divided by 30. When I do 24 divided by 30, by the way, that's the same as 4 divided by 5, you get 0 0.8. Sine of angle is equal to 0 0.8. I just now have a decimal, don't I? I don't have an angle. So that means I have to go to trig second degree and press sign, and I discover my angle is this. We just need to know angle A is that. We just need to know what rounding they want. They don't say. So we can, I guess, pick the rounding. I'm going to just use that. The angle is 53.13 degrees. It's important to put degrees or the little circle symbol. So this one they're teaching you which equation to use and why. 
based on the information you have and they're also still teaching you to convert a decimal to the angle. Okay, this one's all words coming up. Number four. A tree that was 9.5 meters tall. Let's start with that. We're talking about a tree that is 9.5 meters tall. So we know that it's 9.5 meters tall. It is cast and casting a shadow that is 3.8 meters, meters long. Where are shadows? They're on the ground. What is the elevation, angle of elevation? Let's talk about that. 3.8 meters on the ground. Angle of elevation is when somebody is standing on the ground looking at that horizon this way. So I'm standing there looking. And the sun is up here casting the shadow. The sun is casting that shadow. And I turn my head from the horizon up to look at the sun. They want to know how much angle of elevation, in other words, how much do I have to tilt my head in degrees to look from the horizon to the sun. That's an angle of elevation, which means instantly it's talking about this angle here because I'm observing on the ground here and I look up to see the sun. How ah, well, we need to find this angle using the opposite and the adjacent. So this is the same similar puzzle. We have to say Sokotoa has opposite and hypotenuse. Sure, I could figure the hypotenuse out with Pythagoras, but why? Then Ka uses the adjacent in the hypotenuse. I don't have the hypotenuse. But Toa says that the tan of this angle is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. Well, I have the opposite of this angle, 9.5, and I have the adjacent. It's that, which means the tan of this angle of elevation is equal to the, that fraction divided. Well, 9.5 divided by 3.8 is this. It's clearly a fraction, but it's above 1, right? So you might think that's an angle. But no, I found some decimals, and I'm looking for the angle. So i got to go trig, second, tan, so arctan, two, and it's this. This is the actual angle. Now, I'll explain this how you would write this down. If the tan of the angle, if the tan of the angle is equal to 9.5 divided by 3.8, then the arctan of 9.5 divided by 3.8 is equal to the angle. In other words, if I look at this angle A here as something that's being bothered by tan, to get rid of tan, I have to arc tan both sides. Arc tan, opposite tan, both sides. I need a bit more room. It's arc tan of tan, just a square root of a square or multiplying a divide, division, cancels out. So that means this tan word and this arc tan word cancel out. I'm left with angle A. Angle A is equal to the arctan, which is just tan to the minus 1, tan to the minus 1 symbol of 9.5, 3.8. That's how you can kind of wrap, wrap your head around it. And when we discover that, they don't tell us what, uh, what they want us to round it up to, but that's the angle. I have to lift my head 68.19 degrees in order to see that sun. Okay, number, the next one, number six, and then we're almost done. Number 10 is after that. Number six. A building code states that a set of stairs cannot rise more than 72 meters for each 100 meters of run. Where have we seen rise and run? Slope. Slope is equal to rise over run. How did we used to get the run? Y values. And how do we use to get the run? X values. What do we associate with at Y? Up and down. What do we associate with? So up and down means rise. What do we associate with run? Left and right. So X or hor horizon is associated with run. They tell us this must cannot rise more than 72 centimeters. 
compared to the run of 100 centimeters, which makes sense because it'd be too steep. So really, if I was to draw this properly, it would look something like this. There we go. And then if I'm going to make my stairs, you know, obviously the stairs would look more like this. And the reason they have these rules, because if I make this too high, people can't climb up that. It's just, you'll fall. You'll have, you'll have many people broken legs. So I have to make it sort of uh, less steep. But really, they don't draw on the stairs like that. They just show the angle like that. What is the, the maximum angle? So what is the angle? That's the maximum angle at which the stairs can rise. Well, we can see that to this angle, they've given us the opposite and the adjacent. So we should use the thing that has opposite and adjacent in it, which means tan of our angle is equal to the opposite and adjacent. That's Toa uses opposite and adjacent. We don't know our angle, but we do know our opposite and we do know our adjacent. So we're now our tan of our angle is equal to that, or we can arc tan both sides of tan angle A and arc tan both sides here. 72, which is 0 0.72. And arc tan here cancels out with tan. And I'm left with whatever. So that means angle A is arc tan of 0 0.72, which is 72 divided by 100. So that means I can just take my calculator and take 72 divided by 100 and arc tan it. This is my angle. So that means they cannot rise higher than 35 degrees. Uh, 36 is too high. 35.75. They round up, it's 36. But they don't say round up or anything. So you should never rise your stairs higher than that angle or people will fall and break their legs. Or elderly won't be able to rise it. It's a building code. So you can see that even basic math has an application. For instance, if you built a house with higher stairs and you have to get everything inspected when you build a house and the inspector comes in and sees the higher angle he will say tear down the stairs and rebuild them which costs you a lot of money building one set of stairs costs about oh ten thousand dollars which means that's ten thousand dollars down the drain if you ignore this basic math principle people get this you might think that's not ever going to happen it happens all the time people get told to rebuild something all the time because they they ignored a math or a code after one air, a, a tr a, an airplane has traveled 350 meters. Strong winds, however, have caused the plane to be 45 kilometers west of its planned flight. How many degrees is the plane off? Well, after one hour, plane has traveled 350. So that's the actual flight path. It has traveled 350 kilometers. It is 48 kilometers west of its goal. Its goal was up here. This is where it was trying to go. This is where it's headed up 45 meters west of its target. West is left. In a compass, north and south are up and down like y-axis. East is right on the x-axis and west is left. You might have to memorize this compass sometime anyway. So north, south are opposite. West, east is left and right. North is always at the top of the compass on a map as well. So that means it was went 48 kilometers west so this line over here is 48 kilometers how many degrees is the airplane off course so it's clear we want to see this degrees we have the hypotenuse and what appears to be the opposite we just need to figure out which one has the opposite and the hypotenuse well so has the opposite and the hypotenuse sine of our mysterious angle is equal to opposite to what divided by hypotenuse, which is 48 divided by 350. If I arc sine both sides of sine angle A, I have to arc sine 48 divided by 350, which means this arc sine and the sine cancel out, which means my angle A is equal to the arc sine of 48 over 350. So I take 48 divided by 350, And now I have a decimal, an arc sign just means trig, second value, the sign to the negative one. Inverse sign is another word for it, inverse sign. 
which means my angle, my angle A, is equal to this many degrees. Oh, didn't catch it. This many degrees. Uh, they don't say to round up or anything, so this many degrees. Not much, right? Interestingly enough, the longer you travel off course, if he'd ended here, he wouldn't be that far off course. If he'd ended here, he wouldn't be that far off course. When he ended here, he was 48. If he keeps going, he keeps getting further and further off course, which means small degrees of air get bigger and bigger the longer they are applied. It's a useful concept for anything. And that's question 10, and that's it, and that's all the 10s on, your, on this uh, next assignment.